Hello everyone, this is Jesse.com and in this review we are going to tell you about one of the representatives of 40 nanometers lineup models from Intel Broadville E processor core i7-6900K. At the end of May, Intel released a line of high-performance desktop processors Intel Broadwell E. However, users did not show much excitement in this regard. Firstly, the processors are aimed at a relatively small segment of wealthy enthusiasts, because the majority of users cannot afford paying more than $400 just for a processor. Secondly, the new products are assembled on the well-known 40 nanometers Broadwell microarchitecture for the existing platform Intel X99, so you could hardly expect any specific innovations from these models. So, let's start our review with presentation of all the available models from Intel Broadwell E-Line. It includes four processors, 6 core i7-6800K and 6850K, 8 core i7-6900K and 10 core i7-6950X. By the way, this is the first 10 core model in the mass market of user systems. Just to make it clear, let's compare the key performance records of the new products with Intel Haswell E generation. Their clock frequency got slightly higher while maintaining the same TDP level of 140 watts. Also, they improved the RAM subsystem. Now there is a guaranteed support for DDR4 2400 MHz modules with a total capacity of up to 128 GB. And models with the same number of cores retain the same capacity of L3 cache memory. In other words, here you can see the preserved distribution ratio of 2.5 MB per core. For the review and for the testing, we got a pre-sale copy of processor Intel Core i7-6900K without its packaging and supply set. However, the official presentation slide of Intel Broadwell E lineup gives us a chance to see the exterior design of the box. The leading 10-core model Intel Core i7-6950X Extreme Edition will have a completely black box, and all the other representatives of this series will have blue boxes with color front side. Again, the box will not include the regular cooling system, since the majority of users will still want to install a more efficient cooler for such solutions. i7-6900K, as well as all other models from Intel Broadwell E-Series, got bigger and more massive heat spreading cover. Now it covers almost completely the front part to balance thinner base layer. The contact pads on the reverse side match the processor socket LGA2011 V3, and the central part got more structural components, also in no way it can affect the installation process. Under the maximum load generated by means of benchmark ADA64 and by dynamic mode disabled, the CPU clock speed makes 3200 MHz at a voltage of 1.007 V. After activation of trademark technologies Tuba Boost 2.0 and Tuba Boost Max Technology 3.0, the speed of 7 cores increases up to 3700 MHz, and a single core can be overclocked up to 4000 MHz at a voltage of 1.290 volts. It's interesting that the last year's 8-core leader, Intel Core i7-5960X Extreme Edition, with dynamic mode disabled, operated at a frequency of 3000 MHz under a voltage of 0.889 volts, and by Intel Tuba Boost 2.0 mode, frequency of three or more cores could reach 3300 MHz. They also provided mode of 3500 MHz for one or two cores, although we failed to obtain it in practice. Thus, we see that Core 7-6900K can support operation of all the eight cores at the declared maximum frequency of 3700 MHz, and it is even possible to overclock one of them up to 4000 MHz. And the leader of the previous generation had only some of the eight physical cores, which could reach the claimed dynamic frequency. Under the maximum load by means of stress test ADA64, temperatures of processor cores of the tested model were in the range from 48 to 73 degrees. Bench cooling system Skythe Mugen 3 was used for cooling. 
The built-in RAM controller provides stable support for operation of DDR4 2400, 2133 MHz in 4-channel mode. The total capacity of RAM should not exceed 128 GB. And the new product lacks an integrated graphics core. We use the following equipment for the testing and comparing the processors. Firstly, we compare the computing facilities of high-end processors from our database with the records of i7-6900K. As expected, it didn't have any compelling competitors, so i7-5960X Extreme Edition got behind by 13.5% on average, but it was not proved by all the tests of the new technique. i7-6700K and Xeon E3-1280 V5 yielded by 21.5% and 24% on average, respectively, and AMD FX8370 lagged behind by 42% on average. It's very interesting that the tested model can show a high performance gain in synthetic benchmarks, data encryption and video coding applications as compared to average records. Although gaming benchmarks reduce the difference between i7-6700K and i7-6900K up to 1 or 2 percent, that is, the new product is more likely to be used as a workstation or in systems with hard multitasking, and you'd better consider cheaper models from Intel Skylake series to assemble a gaming computer only. And it's all because of the low percentage of parallel code in the test games, which levels the double advantage in the number of processor cores. The overclocking was performed by increasing the multiplier and the voltage on the processor cores. Since we tested a pre-sale copy and used not the most efficient air coolant system, we limited to the level of 4200 MHz at multiplier ratio 42 and the voltage of 1.290 volts. And to ensure the successful stress test Linux, we used AVX ratio offset function with ratio 12. That is, the frequency of cores which processed AVX instructions was automatically reduced to 1200 MHz. As you can see, the system passed the stress test without fails, although the temperature of some cores was rising up to 92 degrees during the process. By increasing the multiplier to ratio 43, the voltage required for stable operation made already 1.28 1.3 volts, but during the test some of the cores got overheated. On average, we managed to get a bit more than 8% cross. We should specially mention the significant results of real bench test, which perfectly responds to raising the clock speed as well as to the available 8 physical and 16 virtual cores. It's a pity that such a parallel code is not very widely used in games. And finally, we present a summary table of comparing activation of technologies Intel Tuba Boost 2.0 and Tuba Boost Max Technology 3.0. The point is that the latter obligatory requires Intel Tuba Boost Max driver, as you can only fix the records of Tuba Boost 2.0 without it. After the test package, the results look quite predictable. You can get an average increase of 5% in synthetic tests and in data encryption, and less than 1% in games. We did not have any specific expectations from processor Intel Core i7-6900K from Intel Broadwell E-Line, so we were fairly amazed by surprises from Intel. Primarily, the new product would be useful for content creators or for those users who got used to perform many tasks in parallel, quickly switching between them. In this case, i7-6900K will reveal in all its beauty the potential of 8 physical and 16 virtual cores that can operate at the claimed dynamic frequency and which we did not observe in Intel Haswell E-Line with more modest rates. Moreover, one core could even exceed the maximum dynamic speed by several hundred MHz due to Intel Tuba Boost Max Technology 3.0, which would be appreciated by many programs but not by camps in any way. For the most of them, wide opportunities of i7-6900K and of the very platform LGA-1211 V3 remain simply unclaimed. 
the new product would be highly appreciated by overclocking fans as well. Available separate overclocking of course, automatic frequency reduction for those codes that presets AVX instructions, possibility to change VCCU voltage in conjunction with modification of Intel Broadville microarchitecture and finer technological process with upgraded thin fat transistors discover truly unique opportunities. Therefore, with installation of an effective cooling system, you have all the chances to set a number of overclocking world records. Best regards to you and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye!